James is a unique wine writer. He's the Les Murray of writing about wine in prose. Well, James was a Sydney lawyer, and with others he'd started Brokenwood. But his law firm made the decision that they wanted to broaden and incorporate business in Melbourne. And he decided that he would one day retire to be a winemaker and have his own vineyard, and that he wanted to take on the ultimate challenge of making Pinot Noir and wines in the style of Burgundy, which was the wine that he'd fallen in love with. Sitting in my office in Melbourne one day, the phone rings and it's June Church from Warramate. And she said, look, I don't think you'll be interested, but just as a matter of interest, the property next to us is for sale. James thinks, oh, I need a bit of viticulture and technical advice, so I'll take my friend Tony Jordan with us. Tony, um, I want you to, can you come and have a look at a property with me? I think it, uh, it could be good for a vineyard. So we went onto this property and uh, wandered all over it and it had really good aspect and the soils looked good. And then the next thing he went silent and he said, uh, mm. he says, look, um, I think we're on the wrong property. <laughs> so he thought about it and he said, we're on the wrong property. So we went further up Madden's Lane onto this property and the first thing we saw on this property was this uh, very steep uh, wide gully which is now called the amphitheater. A couple of days later I got back to James and said, I've thought about it. I said, no, you shouldn't buy that property. Uh, that amphitheater area is far too steep. Uh, you can develop it, but it's going to be very expensive. And of course, then it's going to be a management problem forever. Uh, well, Tony, you know what? I've bought the property. To make good Pinot right is the ultimate challenge. And that is, I mean, James doesn't want to do anything easy. <laughs> so that's, I guess, what one of the things that motivated him from the beginning. I think it was pushing viticulture. Uh, further than it had been before. I mean, most people put vineyards on sort of flat land and rows wide so they can fit their big tractors down, but uh, that site, you know, it was hard to work, it was hard to get the vines growing and hard to manage, but, you know, the results are there to see. The wines are, are stellar from those slopes, yeah. Oh, I've got such great memories of those vineyards with the huge mountain ashes growing all around them. It's certainly one of the most beautiful vineyard areas um, that I know. It's very precious to me. And, and the wines coming from Coldstream Hills are still among the very best that I know in Australia with, the, with the, that wonderful Yarra character. Coming to Coldstream Hills for the first time, um, you always heard the, the message about purity, elegance, finesse, and um, showing regionality. And I don't think, you know, really that essence has changed much at all. I think one thing that amazes me and really makes me respect James is his universal sort of um, expansive recall mm. on, on wines and vintages and history within a vintage and within a wine. It's almost encyclopedic. We all like to think we're good judges. He is a good judge <laughs> and he's very precise, very clear. You may not agree originally with his opinion, but he has a great way of weaving a story and getting you to come round. Being able to type what he writes, you might not get to taste them or drink them, but he describes them so well that you almost, you almost can. And in a way, he's created a whole language that other people have tried to follow and can't do as easily. His writing says more about wine than anyone else is able to in the same number of words. When you see his tasting schedule and you think, how is that possible? He just hits his mark and keeps going. And his writing is better today than it was before. People trust his palate implicitly. He's the one review we hang on with bated breath for each year. James loves sharing his passion and his wisdom, just like Glenn did in, in bringing all these sort of newcomers or new uh, winemakers, viticulturists, wine media, retailers, uh, psalms all through into the wine uh, system in terms of wine judging. So he's, he's very passionate about that. Dad was at the forefront of the marketing of the wine industry, of really creating a lot of international awareness of the Australian wine industry, and James really just took up the baton where Dad left off in each, in many instances. They were great show judges, uh, nationally and internationally. 
they were the early wine writers and dad wrote for many years for the Australian and then passed that on to James. They just shared a passion and commitment for the industry in all its highs and lows. You know, I can't think of two people that had a career together that, that was more symbiotic, really. Knowing that you've got someone who started the style of Coldstream Hills, you want to make sure that what you're doing is not only meeting what our expectations are, but you know, deep down you want to make sure that you see the twinkle in his eye. So we'll show James wine, and um, if, if the eyebrows do hit the roof, <laughs> clean them, start cleaning the cobwebs, we know we've, we're under a good thing. The wine itself has rewarded all the effort that's been put into it. Moreover, it's one of the great wineries of Australia, without question. So congratulations. In uh, thinking of the 30th, I think it's congratulations to both James and Suzanne. Oh, well, yeah, lots of love and, and, and good wishes. Congratulations to James and Suzanne. Congratulations, and I hope you have a fabulous celebration tonight.